Well, we, if we haven't met yet, my name's Joel. Uh, like Pastor Mark said, I'm one of the pastors on staff here. Uh, six years ago, my wife Melanie and I, we moved from Idaho with our pastors to help start Ocean's Church. And it's been the best, best decision and that, that we've, ever, we've ever made. We do, we do a, a few things around here. One of my favorite things that we get to do, uh, even midweek throughout the week, is Pastor Mel and I, we help run Oceans College. And I love our Oceans College students. Man, we're going into, this is our fifth year of having an incredible Bible college. And this is a college of great leaders. It's a discipleship program. It's, it's a college where we can help uh, train your young people. And I say all that to say is we have a really awesome event coming up in about a month. On November the 20th, we're doing a preview day for Oceans College. We're going to open up the doors and in, in, invite everybody in. So if you have, maybe you have a high schooler who's thinking about Oceans College next year, parents, you can join them. We want you to come on in, sit in the classes. It's going to be amazing. We have a special guest, Pastor Chad Veach from Zoe Church in L.A. is going to be hanging out with us that day. We have a bunch of incredible classes. We do leadership classes. We have classes for uh, tech and video and media. We have entrepreneurship. Like, you want to start a kingdom-led business? We got a class for you. We have communication, pastoral classes, doctrine. It's incredible. So if you're between the ages of 18 to 30, and if you're even thinking, I'm not even interested, but maybe I'll just go check out Preview Day. I would encourage you, only come if, if you want to change your life and change the world. If you're not interested in either of those two things, don't worry about coming. But if you want to change your life and change the world, come hang out with us on November 20th. Just go to oceanscollege.com, register. You can register your high schooler, register yourself, and we'll see you on November 20th. Sound good? All right, hey, now that we got that out of the way, I'm excited to jump into our, our uh, next installment of our sermon series, Hearing God. Come on, someone say, Hearing God. This is our big idea today. It's this, when God speaks, miracles take place. When we hear his voice, miracles are available. And I want to let you know something. Maybe you're here today and you need a miracle. Maybe this is your first time in an environment like this. Maybe you haven't been in a, in a while. Maybe you've been coming faithfully every week for months, even years. I want to let you know that when God speaks, miracles are available. And we all know when we need a miracle. We need a God-sized intervention. Maybe you need a miracle in your finances. Maybe you need a miracle in your body. Maybe you need a miracle in your mind or your heart. Do you know that God can bring a miracle of peace to you? Do you know that God can heal a broken heart? Do you know it's God is the one who comforts when we're going through hard times? So I just want to let you know, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance is, God is available here for you. I just want to let you know, if you need a miracle of peace, you need a miracle of comfort. I know even my, my heart goes out to some, some dear friends of ours, uh, a, a dear member of our church, our church family that went home to be with Jesus, Miss Judy Sterling. And uh, if... Man, even just as I'm, I'm thinking about just praying, we're praying for the McLaughlins. We love you guys so much. We're praying for the Sterling family. But maybe you're in a similar situation. Man, life happens. Things, things come, out, come, come up and, and, and try, to, try to get us derailed. Whatever the miracle is that you need, yes. peace, direction, clarity, healing, breakthrough, it's available for you. Amen? Come on, does anybody agree? Come on, build your faith. Build your expectation. McLaughlin, Sterling family, we just love you guys. We want to let you know that we're, we're just praying for you and we're, we're here for you. But I do believe that, that God is going to speak to you wherever you're at. That healing is available for you right here in this service. I want to make it specific. Healing is available to you right here in this service. You're watching online right now. Healing's available to you. You could be listening in the car. You could be in your, in, at, at work, in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever. Healing is available right here for you. Amen. God's going to bring mental healing. And this is our, 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 what we're going to talk about a lot today is I, I know this. It's not just a belief. It's a knowing. God brings life into dead places. How do I know that? Because I was living in a dead place. Because I've been dead in my mind. I've been dead in addiction. I've had dead dreams and dead visions. I've been going nowhere fast. But when God intervenes, when he shows up, when he brings life into a situation, he can restore your mind. He can heal your heart. He can give you a God-sized dream. He can point you in the right direction. God is bringing life into dead places. I was a dead man. Christ intervened. 
I was going nowhere. Christ intervened. I was addicted and locked up in my mind. Christ intervened. And that same Jesus is here available for you today. Amen? Amen. We're going to read an awesome story out of Scripture. It's found in the book of Matthew. And in this story, it's a, it's a miracle that happens in a church service. And what I, what I love, what I love about, about this is that Jesus shows up and he performs this miracle. Now, Jesus, he had, um, I'm going to use air quotes here. I'm, I'm going to be facetious and sarcastic just so you know. Jesus had a bad habit of, of doing miracles on the Sabbath day. Jesus had this bad habit of performing miracles when the religious leaders and Pharisees thought, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Now, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the people that were in the synagogues, in the temples, in the churches, every single week, they had fallen more in love with their rules than they had with God. The rules that were first established to help point them in the direction of God had become now their idols. So they had worshipped the rules, and they, had, they knew, they had a rule, they knew you're not allowed to do any work on the Sabbath day. And that's great. We should all take a day off. Somebody said amen. amen. But what they were doing where they took it too far is they wanted to kill Jesus because he was healing people on their sacred Sabbath day. And in an attempt to keep the sanctity of their rules, they missed the Savior. They missed the one who was actually in the building performing the miracles. They were too in love with their way of life that they missed out on his way of life. So in this story, Jesus, he picks up his bad habit again. He's done this several times. Seven times. You know, seven times Jesus performed miracles on the Sabbath. Is, is, is Jesus a, a rule breaker? Is he a law breaker? Never moral law, never God's law. But our, our own silly laws that we try to put him in a box on, he'll break those every time. Amen? Amen. We're going to read this story here. It's found in Matthew chapter 12. This takes place on a Sabbath in church. This is verse 9. If you're taking notes, write down Matthew 12, 9. It says, he, being Jesus, went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. And they, the religious Pharisees, asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? They did this so that they might accuse him. Now, Jesus said to them, which one of you who has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath would not take hold of it and lift it out of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And then Jesus, he turns away from the dysfunction of the Pharisees. He looks at the man and he says, this is powerful. He says, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out. And it was restored. It was restored. Healthy like the other. He says, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored. Healthy like the other. I believe Jesus wants to bring healing. He wants to bring restoration. He wants to perform a miracle for you today. If you're taking notes, which I hope you are, you can write down this title of today's talk. It's simply this, stretch out your hand. It's our title today, stretch out your hand. Let's pray together. God, I thank you first and foremost for how amazing you are. God, I thank you that you pulled us up out of the mud, scripture says. You put us on a right path. God, I thank you for the very breath in our lungs this morning, that we had a vehicle to even get to church today, that we have uh, the clothes on our backs. God, thank you for the last meal we ate. Thank you for the next meal that we're going to eat. God, we have so much to be grateful for. King Jesus, today, we just want to experience and encounter you. Let us not get too in love with anything that would cause us to miss you being right in front of us. So God, I pray you'd reprioritize. I pray you would make us aware of what you're doing in the room. We love you, King Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Come on, everybody said a good amen. Amen, amen. amen. Jesus has this habit of healing people on the Sabbath day. How many of you know that Jesus, he quotes, he quotes this, he says, hey, don't, don't worry about it, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. And he's the one who can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And so there's a church service going on on this sacred Sabbath day, and they're in the temples, they're in the synagogues. And I love this, this man, the man with the withered hand, the man with the paralyzed hand, because he was just going to church like anybody else. And he, he was a, 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 recipient of, a recipient of Jesus' bad habit. He, he had a scattershot miracle. 
How many, how many of you love being in, in the wake of, of Jesus' miracles? Jesus is trying to teach a lesson to somebody else, so he gives you a miracle. Come on, praise God, I'll take it. Man, Jesus is gonna teach that guy a lesson. Here, you come over here, I'm gonna heal you, right? This man is just finds himself in the temple on the Sabbath, worshiping like he did, worshiping like he knew how to do, and he, was a, 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 he received a great miracle from Jesus. What I know this about my life and your life is that when Jesus wants to teach something to somebody else, he'll heal something in you. When Jesus wants to show himself real in somebody else, he'll heal you. He'll do something real in you. Because when we encounter Jesus, it's never just for us. It's always to help influence and point everybody back to him. So Jesus shows up and he starts mind reading them. He understands the Pharisees thoughts. He knows what they're thinking. And I love how Jesus answers questions. He always answers a question. He brings, uh, you, you ever get in an argument and, and someone's just talking crazy? You ever get in an argument and you're the one talking crazy? And you need somebody from the outside to bring in just some, some logic, right? In, in the world we live in, we've never seen two people get into crazy arguments before. We've never been a part of that before. But I've heard rumors. I've, I've heard stories of people getting in arguments. But Jesus, to this argument, he brings such a simple thought. He goes, okay, listen up. If you had a sheep, if you had a donkey, if you were riding your horse and it fell into a hole, would you not pull it up out of, the, out of the ground? And he doesn't give them any time to respond, right? He says, I'm, I'm going to perform the miracle anyway. That would be like you and I saying, hey, you can't, you can't bless somebody. You can't, you can't give them money for rent. You can't pray for their healing. Uh, you, you can't do that because it's a holy Sunday morning. It's like Jesus saying, if you blew a tire on the way to church, would you not do something about it? Now we got to leave that car, abandon it. We'll come back Monday. We'll come back Tuesday when it's not the holy day. We're going to leave that there, abandon, abandon the vehicle. No, you call somebody. You do what you got to do. You, you get to work. And these religious Pharisees, they were so tied up in their rules that they were okay with the healings on Monday. They love the blessing on Tuesday. They like the miracles on Wednesday. They're okay with it as long as it's not on their holy day. But Jesus shows up. And he performs this miracle. And what I never want to happen in my own life, I never want to be so close to Jesus, yet so far from his miracles. I never want to be so close in the right place at the right time and completely miss it. So I ask you this, this first question, our first question today, is for us, how do we receive a miracle when we hear his voice. How do we receive a miracle when we hear his voice? The first thing that we have to do for you and I is we have to have acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, write it down. We have to acknowledge that it's Jesus that's in the room. I love that when this man acknowledged Jesus's voice, he says, hey, look at me. Stretch out your hand. I'm trying to get your attention. Do you know hands, this is very interesting. I love, I love doing some deep dives with the Bible. Do you know what hands represent in biblical times? You can read stories over and over again. And I was researching this, looking this up. What are the biblical meanings of hands? They can represent things like authority. They can represent blessing. In the Old Testament, fathers would lay their hands on their children to bless them. They represent worship. They represent healing. They represent giving. So this man with the withered hand, his ability to bless was hindered. His authority was taken away from him. His ability to, he himself, lay hands and offer healing was unavailable. So the sheer fact that he acknowledged Jesus began to open up this journey, open up a door for him to get his authority back, for him to get the blessing back, the ability to worship, the ability to heal, the ability to give. Luke chapter 6, when you read this story in the other Gospels, it says specifically it was the man's right hand. And if you place yourself in this story, a man's right hand, this was everything. This is how you greeted one another. This is how you closed on a deal. This was your blessing, your authority. It had all been taken away because of his shriveled, withered hand. So we must acknowledge, 
We have to have acknowledgement when Jesus is speaking to us, when we hear the voice of God. Acknowledgement starts with this. It starts with proximity. It starts with proximity. If you're here in the room, I'd say great job. If you're watching online right now, <clears throat> that's a great first step, is we have to have proximity to the house of God. It starts with proximity. But I, I know this, that the healing place is the house of prayer, but the healing power comes from Christ and Christ alone. It's not just about being in the room. It's about acknowledging who else is in the room with you. It's about acknowledging the King of kings and Lord of lords, that I don't want to go anywhere he is not. Amen? So how do we experience miracles when we hear his voice? Is we have to have an acknowledgement of what he's saying, where he's at, and what he's telling us to do. The second thing we have to do after acknowledgement is we need a response. We need a response. I love that the voice of Jesus goes out and then it's on the man to respond. When Jesus tries to get a hold of you and I, when he gives us vision and direction, when he speaks to us, you know it's simply an invitation. It's on us to respond. I love even prophetic words. Has anyone ever gotten a, a, a prophetic word? We go to a prophetic church, so you probably won't make it to your car into the parking lot after service before somebody wants to encourage you somewhere. But a prophetic word, it's not weird or spooky. It's simply somebody hearing God on behalf of somebody else. And the prophetic is just an invitation. We choose to respond to it or not. So we have to have a response. We have to respond to his voice. You know what's so interesting about this man is that modern medical reports say that a withered hand is caused by shrunken muscles and shortness of limbs. What am I trying to say? I'm saying this is that Jesus actually asked him to do something he was not physically able to do. Man, has Jesus ever asked you to do something and you thought to yourself, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can risk that. I don't think I can believe for that. I don't think I have that ability. Jesus simply says, stretch out your hand. Do the thing that you were not able to do in your own power and watch how the miracle power of Christ would flow through you. Jesus doesn't sugarcoat it based on this man's shortcoming. Jesus doesn't tiptoe around what this man is going through. Jesus doesn't say, okay, I know you probably can't do it. I know you're probably not ready. I know you probably don't think you can or, or you, you see yourself as this way. No, he simply commands him. He speaks it out. He says, do what you can't do on your own. Stretch out your hand. What are some of the areas in our lives that should have strength? What are some of the areas in our life that should be fully grown but maybe have deteriorated? What are some of the areas where the muscles have failed and Jesus is asking us to stretch out our hands? I know in my own life, uh, there's areas that God has redeemed and restored and given me strength in. I know this because I spent years with just even a... Uh, 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 crippled areas of my life, deteriorated areas of my life, these withered areas. I remember having just even most of my life crippling insecurity, being so afraid of what anybody around me was thinking about me. I think the fear of man, the fear of other people's opinions, it grips so many people. And Jesus, in my walk with him, over and over again, has said, hey, I want you to be confident in who you are. I want you to have strength in that area. But Jesus, I can't do it. I'm withered. I'm, I'm, I'm short here. I don't have the availability, the capability. And when Jesus speaks to an insecurity in your life, you know what he brings is he brings an identity. Jesus, he will remind you that we are, it says in scripture, sons and daughters of God. And as sons and daughters of God, if we really understood this, if you understood that your dad is the king of the universe, you would be the most confident person. You would walk around your workplace with such confidence. You would lead with such confidence. You would lead your family with confidence. You would have a backbone that nobody else could break because no, my dad's the king of the world. When he speaks to our insecurity, he brings security through identity. 
He says, stretch out your hand. I will give you identity. Stretch out your hand. I will give you strength in that area. Respond to the voice of Jesus. I know this, that there is clarity, healing, and freedom available when we respond to the voice of Jesus. I would say this. I think God is always speaking. But are we acknowledging him? And are we responding to him? Do we have what it takes to do what he is asking us to do? Man, is there too much noise? Is there too much... Uh, 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 things trying to bombard us? Is there too much insecurity? Is there too many things that have been coming at you, attacking you, trying to derail you? We need to acknowledge and we need to respond. There is clarity. There is healing. There is freedom available when we respond to the voice of, voice of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. So I think first, if we want to experience a miracle when we hear his voice, we have to have acknowledgement. Second, there needs to be a response. Come on, you got to answer that RSVP. You got to answer the invitation. The third thing I say might be the most important is we need honesty. We need honesty. What do I mean by that? I think honesty, it's like a master key that unlocks every door of freedom in your life. It's a master key that can unlock the locks and the chains that have bound you down. Honesty is a, is a key that can get you through doors that were previously closed. It's honesty. It's the key. I think first, the first step in honesty is you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, what do I need right now? Where, where, where am I short? Where am I weak? What do, what do I need help in? And not only do you have to be honest with yourself, I think you got to be honest with those people around you. Not with everybody. I'm not asking you to blast on social media every weird struggle that you're going through. But God has put a circle of people around you. Scripture says this, that we confess our shortcomings. It says we confess our sins, the things that we're struggling with, those withered areas in our life. It says confess them to one another and you will be healed. You'll have freedom. As iron sharpens iron, that's why I love small groups. That's why I love the community of church. That's why I love being in God's house. This is something that I've, that I've tried to do. This is something that, that I've adopted. Say, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I need, if I need prayer, man, I'll grab one of my guys. If I'm here on a Tuesday or Thursday and I'm going through it, I'll tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, can you pray for me? I need prayer right now. I want to be honest with you. This is what I'm going through. I think if we started being honest more, you would unlock a level of freedom in your life that maybe you haven't experienced before. I think it's time to be honest with your small group leader. It's time to be honest with your spouse. It's time to be honest with your pastors. you got to be honest with yourself. Let's be honest with each other. I think the third area we got to be honest in is, is we have to be honest with Jesus. We have to be honest with Jesus. You know, I think um, sometimes it's easy to respond and be honest with Jesus when he gets really specific. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm sure there's people here in the room, people watching online. If God thundered through the clouds and told you everything about yourself, said, I know what you did at Tuesday at 1.04 p.m., and, and he'll do this if he needs to. He'll use people if he needs to. But I think if, you said, if, if your attitude is, God, if, if, if God specifically calls it out. Oh, uh, he said that you need, you need breakthrough, but he didn't actually say you need breakthrough in this area specifically. I think it's easier for us to respond when there's specifics. When I read this story, though, and I love, I love dissecting the, the stories of Scripture. I love putting myself into the Scripture. I love reading it. Do you know what Jesus didn't say to this man? And I love this man for it. When Jesus walked in the room, he did not say, excuse me, sir, your right hand is withered. I would like you to take your right hand and lay it out before me, and you're going to see a miracle. Jesus doesn't give the details. There was never even a promise of a miracle. Remember, he asked him to do something that he could not do. And he says, stretch out your hand. When I put myself in this story, I think about the insecurities that I've had growing up. I think about the insecurities I've had in my adult life. I think about my shortcomings. I think about how I want to posture and position myself. And I know we live in a world today, we all know this, it's an online world. It's a posturing world. 
We live in a, in a beautiful part of the country, but we live in a part of the country that wants to position ourselves to never show anything bad. And when I think about that, and I think about my own life, and I put myself in this story, I wonder this question. Would I have given Jesus my bad hand? Or would I have tried to show him my good hands? I think so many times we, we have areas that are, that are deteriorated. We have areas that are short. We have areas that are weak. But when Jesus shows up and says, stretch that out to me, we keep it hidden in our jacket and say, okay, no, no, Jesus, look, I'm good. I'm doing all right. Hey, do you need anything? Do you need prayer? I'm doing great. It's been an awesome week. Hey, how's, how's that struggle going? How's your marriage? Uh, you know, we're doing really good, and I want to show my good hand. I'm going to post about my good hand. I'm going to tell people about my good hand. And I wonder if we started getting more honest about the areas that needed healing, what kind of courage that would give to the people around us. Because we posture ourselves too much. And I know this in my own life because it's something that it hit the brakes, on, I feel like, on my growth for a 10-year window. It was this full vulnerable level of honesty of trying to to lead at work to lead even in church to lead my family by constantly showing my good hand no nah, nothing nothing stresses me out nope I'm not struggling with anything no nah, we're we're gonna we're gonna be okay no I'm, I'm not battling with that in my mind no I'm not making those mistakes I, I, let me show you let me show you the good parts and it's possible to be in God's house, to have proximity, and still have withered areas of your life. But this is what Jesus wants to heal today. In my own life, there was a 10-year window where I remember, it was the summer I turned 18, getting right with God. It was a beautiful moment. I was alone in my car. I was, I was running hard from him. I hadn't been to church in over a year. Definitely hadn't read my Bible in a long time. And I was, I was coming from somewhere I shouldn't have been doing stuff I, I shouldn't have been doing. And what I was trying to do in the middle of the night was drive home and, and sneak back into my parents' house before they realized I was gone. And in, in, a, in a moment of, of just God's goodness, I don't know, I don't know how I got there, if it was, if it was divine or just the, the old CD changer on my 95 Nissan Pathfinder. But as I'm listening to music, a, a worship song came on shuffle, and I remember it just, it got me. It got me in this moment. And I just I just began to feel God's presence. I was saved. I was in proximity. I was close to Jesus. But there were areas of my life that I hadn't turned over yet. And for a 10-year window, man, I, I, was, I was faithful, I was serving, I was leading, I was loving, I was, I was doing what he asked me to do, but there were still these areas that I was hiding in my jacket that I didn't want to expose. And what are they going to think about me? What are they going to say? What's my wife going to say? What are my, what's my boss going to say? What are my pastors going to say? What, what is my small group going to say? I promise you, you got to get to a point where you're not worried about what anybody else thinks, where you're only worried about the obedience and the freedom that comes with being honest. It's Christ only by the power of His grace can put life into dead areas. It's only His power that can heal the withered hand. So I've made a commitment in my own life that it doesn't matter if I'm in the back row or front row, if there's an altar time I need to respond to, I'm responding. I don't care what anybody else thinks. If there's something I need to talk about, I'll talk about it. If there's a, something I need prayer for, I'll get prayer. If there's something that I need to do, I'll do it. Why? Because I want the healing that's available. When we obey and we stretch out our hand and allow Jesus to heal, there's restoration that comes. He says this in, um, in verse 13. I'll read it again. It says, Jesus said to the man, he said, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored, healthy like the other. I love these two words. It was restored, healthy like the other. Maybe you found yourself in God's house, but not fully 
healed. Healed in our minds, in our hearts, even a physical healing. God's available for all of it. Maybe, maybe um, you fall more in the category of needing to be restored. I love that word restored because it actually implies that maybe this man's hand was fine at some point and it needed to be restored back to its former health. I've been there many times in church. God, I don't want yesterday to be the day that I was closest to you. I don't want my best days with you to be 16 years ago when I really got my life right. I don't want my best days to you to be the two years I was in Bible college. I don't want the best days to, to be the, those, those years where we had great faith, we're praying big prayers. Remember the good old days? No, my good old days are tomorrow. My good old days are in the future. I want the closest access to be here and now. Maybe you need to be restored today, brought healthy like we once were. Because I know this, when you're in an environment like this, when you're in the presence of Jesus, Scripture says this, it says, where the Spirit is, where the presence of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom available. There's freedom available. And I know this, God spoke to me so clearly, I was, I was praying for you earlier, and God wanted to even let you know, maybe, maybe you need a specific, he's still that good. God wanted me to let you know that there's somebody here You've had a crippling fear of the future. And it, it's paralyzed you. It's put the brakes on, on, on you even stepping out. It's felt like a withered part, but maybe you're in a position of leadership. It could be in your business or just family. Maybe you're in a position of leadership in a ministry you, in, you run or just have influence, but there's a crippling fear of the future. And God wanted to let you know that your vulnerability and your willingness to get healed is actually going to do more for the kingdom of God than you trying to hide it and power through. That key of honesty is going to unlock some major freedom for you. And he gave me this verse for you. It's in Psalms 92. It's one of the best verses of all time. Psalms 92, 12. It says, the righteous flourish like a palm tree grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And then there's 13 and 14. It says, they are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Here's the best part. It says they will still bear fruit in old age. God is going to eliminate that fear of the future, that fear of an early death, that fear of even a ruin and abandonment. And God is going to allow you to flourish in old age. And I believe that is for somebody in this room that Jesus wanted to let you know that, hey, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get specific with you because he loves you that much. He didn't give that to me first service. That's, that's for you. And so today, man, I want to offer you an invitation. The availability, the, the opportunity really to RSVP to God's voice. When he says, what are the areas that you need healing in? What are the areas that you're weak in? Would you stretch out your hands? Would you stretch out your hand? Church all over the room, could you stand with me? Could you just close your eyes for a moment? There's a group, a quick group of people I want to pray for. And then we're going we're gonna to invite Jesus. We're going to pray for healings. We'll do that. I want to pray for a quick group first. Maybe, maybe if you're, you're in that first group I just prayed for and you have that crippling fear of the future, you, you could maybe fall into this category. But I sense that there was a lot of people where the withered area, you know it's, it's the battle in your mind. I just even, I, I saw when I was praying for you yesterday, I was praying, I was praying for the church yesterday. I saw many people who just had like a dark cloud over them. And it was a dark cloud over your mind. And there was like this, this darkness that had just gripped you. And God wanted to let you know today that he's breaking the grip of darkness. And I saw almost like, like the breath of God just blowing away the fog of the enemy over your mind. Come on, with your eyes closed, if, if that's you, could you, could you do this 
So that's the area I need God to heal. Would you just place your hand on your head? And God is breaking just even the bombardment of lustful thoughts. He's breaking fear. He's breaking suicidal thoughts. He's breaking the demonic activity of the enemy. He's breaking just even darkness over our minds. Romans 8, 6. Come on, keep your, keep your hand on your, on your head right here. Romans 8, 6. It says, the mind governed by flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Come on, with your hand on your head, God, I pray these two words over my friends here. God, I pray life and I pray peace. God, I pray life and I pray peace. God, I ask that you would bring life into dead areas. And God, you would bring peace into the areas that we've been bombarded with anxiety and fear and depression and worry. God, we pray life and we pray peace. In Jesus' name. Could you do this next thing all over the room? Could everyone just place their hand on their heart? And with your hand on your heart, I do believe there's many people here that even as, as we've been talking today, at some point in the last half hour, 45 minutes, the Holy Spirit's nudging you. I come to find that a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times that's how God speaks to me. It feels more like a, like a nudge, like, hey, go that, go that way. Go in that direction. With your head on your heart, you would say, I, I know, maybe, maybe you don't know what it is. You're like, something's been nudging me. That's, that's the voice of God, my friend. And if, you, if you're here and you're, you're not living for Jesus, like, I don't have that proximity to him. I don't know what his voice is like. I don't, I don't even know how to respond. He wants to give you the opportunity today, the invitation today to do our first step, just to simply acknowledge him. If you're not living for Jesus, and you should, I believe today is a day that you can make the best decision you've ever made. There's a second group in here. Maybe your story is similar to mine. When I, was, when I was a young boy, I grew up in church. I was in Sunday school. But this relationship with God, it was always, it was always mom and dad's God. And it wasn't until I had that moment when I was 18 that I made a decision that this is, this is not just gonna be mom and dad's God. It's not gonna be someone else's relationship. It's gonna be mine. And I came back to Jesus after running from him. I, I, uh, I'm gonna use that word again. I was restored. Maybe some of you need to be healed for the first time. Others need to be restored. Some of you need to make a decision for Jesus for the very first time. Others need to come back to him all over the room, I would ask you to do this. Could you just close your eyes? Because I'm, 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 I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to point you out or call you out. But with every eye closed and your hand on your heart, if you say, that's me, I need to make a decision today that I want to serve Jesus. What I want you to do is just, is just look at me, look at me and wave. Come on, go ahead and start waving. And thank you. I see one. I see two, three. Thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thank you. Twelve. So proud of you. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 in the back, so proud of you. 17, 18, 19. Come on, 20, 21, 22. Anybody else? 23, thank you, sir. 24, I see you in the middle here. 24, come on, anybody else? If I didn't catch you, just, just wave at me. Every eye's closed. Just wave at me if I didn't, I didn't catch you. 25, beautiful, beautiful. I counted you, that's awesome. 25 people, praise God. If you're watching online right now, we have people that want to pray for you. Just go ahead and, and jump in the comments. I want you to write heart, H-E-A-R-T, saying that you're responding with the 25 people here in this room. As you know that every single week, there's people on Facebook and YouTube that are giving their lives to Jesus. It really is incredible. But I want to let you guys know, those of you watching online and even you here in this room, was 25, that you're making a decision. It's not just going to impact you. But it's going to impact the people around you. It's going to impact your kids and your future kids. And I'm so proud of you. Everybody with our hands on our hearts, can we pray this prayer together? Just say, dear Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. And today I want proximity to you. I stretch out my hand and ask for you to heal me. And I'm praying that from this day forward, I would serve you the rest of my days. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray for one more, one more group here. I believe this. We believe at Ocean Church that God is a God who heals. He heals. And healing is available 
at 10.59 a.m. on a Sunday. It, it's 11. It just turned 11. At 11 a.m. on a Sunday, healing's available for you. So if you need healing in your body, healing in your bloodstream, could be blood, bones, could be eyes, ears, could be a mental healing or, or healing in your heart, man, we want to pray with you. Could you just put a hand in the air and just say, I need, I need healing in my body. I need healing in my body. Oh, sister, if you're around them, just one or two hands. Could you lay a hand on their shoulder? And we're just going to believe together that God is going to release healing in the room. God, I thank you that you are the miracle worker. God, I thank you that you are the one who speaks and miracles happen. God, we pray a prayer like this. You, you commanded it in Scripture. You said, stretch out your hand. You said, blind eye see. You said, deaf ear hear. God, we are asking that you would make a way where there was no way. God, we ask that blood would come into alignment. Cells would come into alignment. That brain, that brain function and brain waves would come into alignment. God, we pray you would shock doctors. You would amaze nurses. And God, that you would get all the credit and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And come on, if you want to partner your faith together and you want to thank him for the healing, just in advance say thank you. Come on, in advance thank him. In advance give him a big hand clap for the healing. Come on, I think it'd be appropriate to give him a loud shout. Let's thank God for how good he is.